So I get a lot of comments when I post videos of this M5, and a lot of them are about the wheels. Some people just don't like them. They say that they're ugly, and they say that they're aftermarket, and they want me to get rid of them. Well, these are actually the original wheels that came on the car, and I'm not getting rid of them. BMW called them the M Systems, which are comprised of the wheels that you see here, plus a set of caps that can be switched out. They came in two configurations. Originally, the E34 M5s came with the turbine caps, which had directional vents that blew air over the brakes to cool them down. They were really cool, but they didn't get much love at the time because they didn't look so flashy and kind of made the car look a little bit bland. In 1992, BMW swapped over to the throwing star caps, which definitely gave the car a little bit more of an aggressive presence on the road. These are the ones we're installing today. Personally, I love both the turbines and the throwing star caps. They've become a little bit of a collector's item lately, and they're not so easy to find. So if anybody has an extra set lying around in their basement, let me know. I wouldn't mind having a spare. First a little bath for the wheels. It was cold outside today, so I didn't really have a chance to take them outside to wash them properly. And then the caps can be placed over them. Put a little bit of anti-seize on these bolts because sometimes they can get really stuck in there and not want to come out, just in case we want to change them next time. And yes, I know the tires are a million years old, don't worry, new ones are coming. Then the bolts are torqued to three Newton meters or 2.2 foot pounds for our American friends south of the border who will measure things using anything except the metric system. And another interesting thing about these wheels is that they are directional. They have a left and a right. So if you're ever installing these wheels, keep an eye out for the spokes and see which way they're pointing. I see them put on backwards more often than not. Look at that, car now looks much better. Next on the list, we're gonna lift up the car to check out some of the rubber bushings for the engine and transmission. I have a feeling they're not in the best shape. First, we're going to remove the plastic panels under the car so we can have access to check them out. Ooh, looks like this panel's cracked in the middle. I'll have a quick look under the car to see how it's looking, but I think I gotta fix this first. It's really bugging me.
I checked out the part number for this piece, it is M5 specific, and to my surprise BMW actually does carry it. Costs about 200 bucks, and this one isn't so bad, so let me try to fix it first and see what I can do. First I'm going to clean up all the dirt and gunk that's been uh, sitting in there for quite a while. There was a lot there. I have this tool here, it's called the plastic welding gun. It's mainly used in body shops to fix broken bumpers, but it basically heats up a piece of metal that actually melts into the plastic and that helps bond it together to seal it. I'm not the best at using this tool, it doesn't look the prettiest, but actually it holds up and it's pretty strong. So enjoy this time lapse of me sniffing toxic melting plastic but it's all worth it just to fix this car. And you clip off the ends of the little metal pieces so that it sits kind of flush. And the last step I do is to use this like a soldering iron and melt a piece of plastic over it to kind of smooth it out. It's like TIG welding, but for plastic. It might look like Frankenstein's neck, but it'll hold and it'll do the job. Now the engine mounts. I can already tell just by looking that they're not in the best shape, but we'll try lifting up the engine. And you can see that the engine mount actually starts to separate from itself, which is not good. It's supposed to stay together to hold the engine from moving too much. So this is definitely bad and will need to be replaced. Also the transmission mounts, not looking good. Now I use a whole range of extensions and wobbles to try and get at this top nut on this engine mount, but it's not really easy to reach. I can't get a great grip on it. I eventually settled for a set of 3 8 inch extensions that got the job done. When I have all these extensions stacked up like this, I call it the Salvador Dali elephant legs. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google it. You'll see. And this side was even more of a pain than the other side. Uh, it took me so long, kept trying back and forth. Eventually I got it, but yeah, it's a very tight spot. We now lift the engine up out of the way so that we can have enough clearance and room to get the engine mount out. And I should also mention that I did 
release the fan because if you lift the engine and the fan clutch is still on, it will hit the shroud and you will have something break. And here you can see the difference between the two engine mounts. The one on the right is obviously the good one. So that's the one that we're gonna install. Same idea goes for this right side mount. We jack up the engine and get the mount out. Now this one doesn't look as bad physically as the other one, but when we put them together side by side, we can see that it's actually a lot lower. So it's been crushed and it's making the engine sit down further in the engine bay. That's not good. We don't want that. Always torque your bolts and nuts to spec. Beep, 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 beep. And now on to the transmission bushings. These are held onto the transmission with two 13 millimeter nuts. They're held onto the mount with two more 13 millimeter nuts. And the mount is held onto the chassis by four 13 millimeter bolts. They're a little bit tight in here. Ideally, I would like to take the exhaust out or down at least, but when working on an old car like this, I try not to touch things if I can because every bolt you touch is a chance for another broken bolt or something to go wrong. So I'll work around it and I'll get the job done somehow. As you can see, the exhaust is completely blocking the bolt that we have to get to. But where there's a will, there's a way. And we got it loose. Woo! That was tight. Once we get all the bolts out, the transmission cross member is free to come out. And we can change the rubber bushings on the bench. Yeah, it's not supposed to do that. And if you look carefully, you'll see the date stamp from 1988. So I think it's a good time to change this out. There's a little notch to line them up, and the torque spec is one or two ogadogas. Put it all back together and tighten it up, and that's another job crossed off the list. And those of you with a keen eye will notice that there is a transmission leak and the guibo or jubo however it's pronounced is put on backwards. That'll be a job for another day. And we finally got a new slave cylinder for it. I replaced it but I didn't film it. And that's all the time we have for today. Catch you next time.